Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any other time church is open, it's your job to be there. I don't care if Aunt Susie that you haven't seen for 20 years having a birthday party. Aunt Susie didn't die on the cross for you. Oh, I don't care. You know, I don't, I don't care what's going on. God's people need to be in the services. Now, that's how strong I am on it. And you know I mean it. Now, throw all that out. Because unless you're following the Lord every day, you're in trouble. Jesus didn't call us just to go to church. Jesus called us to follow him and to live for him. Listen, young people, and just because you're young doesn't mean Jesus didn't call you to live for him. You're supposed to follow Jesus just as much as mom and dad are. You have to be saved on your own just because you grew up in a house where people, where people taught the Bible and where they went to church and, 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 people, and your mom and dad was saved just because you grew up in a home where people saved does not mean that you have a free ticket to heaven. Young people, I believe, are being deceived today. I believe young people are being told that all you have to do is profess the name Jesus and you can live just about the way you want to and go to heaven and that's the devil's lie hatched in hell. Jesus called young and old, rich and poor to come and follow him. Notice what it says there. Be ye therefore followers of God. Dear children as dear children and walk in love can't be hateful I preached about that this morning temper you can't be hateful and mean and please the Lord you gotta be real Christianity is about being real all the time and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering <clears throat> and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness, free love is, it'll take you to hell. It'll ruin your life, first of all, and it'll take you to hell. That's one of the, one of the lies that's been told to young people that a few years ago, I can remember, the first lady of the United States knew her daughter was having an affair. And the news got a hold of that and they just built it up. It was just wonderful news. And a lot of people bought into it. The world can do that because the world's already lost. Church, the church can't do it. That's sin. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You can't, you don't go to heaven because you can say, I'm a Christian. You don't go to heaven because you say, I go to church. There's so many people have that idea today. That, that, you know, they went to some church somewhere and, and they, they got under a little bit of, they were confronted, they got under a little bit of conviction, they went to the altar and, and, and they prayed and, and somebody told them, you're saved, you're okay now, and now they go out and they live pretty well the way they want to and they think they're okay. They're just ignoring the signs. Let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, that's serious. He was serious about our salvation. And he will take nothing less than us being serious about following him. You say, preacher, you're scaring me. 
Hey, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to tell you. Being a Christian is a wonderful life. We have a lot of we have a lot of joy in this church. Amen. Man, I came in and listened to this choir and I listen to these specials. I hear people testify. I see people's lives. We encourage each other. We pray for each other. Praise God. The world don't have that. The world don't have that kind of fellowship. We've got something the world just don't even know anything about. Being a Christian is a wonderful thing, but folks, you've got to be serious about following Jesus to be a Christian. Conviction. It takes conviction to be saved. I, I talked to a guy the other day, and he said, he said, well, you know, and here was a guy who was serious. And he said, I want to get saved. I want to get saved. But he said, I just, I just don't feel the Holy Spirit in my life. I just don't feel God calling me. I want to feel God calling me. I said, let me take took him over Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Took him to some other scriptures where Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. And I said, if you heard the gospel, that's the Holy Spirit calling you. And I took him over to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 2, where it said, no man can confess that Jesus is Christ but by the Holy Spirit. And I said, nobody can seriously say and really mean it with all their heart that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And if you can come to Christ in the seriousness of your heart, you can be saved. And he got saved. Hallelujah. But it took conviction. Well, let me give you the last thing. To wake up the dead, there must be conversion. Let me take you back to Ephesians, my text, the fifth chapter, verse 13 and 14. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. There's one thing. We need to understand conviction is not conversion. Many years ago, I knew a fellow. The first time I met him, I was introduced to him by a good friend. And I had opportunity. The door just opened for me to share the gospel with him. And I took out my Bible, and I went through the Roman road with him. And if I ever saw conviction on a person, I did that day. He stood there almost trembling. He said, I go to church. He hung on to that. He said, I go to church. He said, I, he said, I, I've, been, I've been baptized. He said, I, I go to church. I said, that's not it. That's not it. That's not salvation. Have you given your life to Christ? And he would not tell me he had given his life to Christ. You see, he was confronted with he was confronted with his sin. He, he was convicted by the Holy Spirit. But my friends, he was not converted. That was 20 years ago, and he's still lost. Doesn't even go to church today. Well, let me ask you. Do you know that you're lost? Have you come to a time in your life? When you looked at your life and you saw yourself as God sees you, that's not a pretty picture. Peter said, depart from me, O Lord, I'm a sinful man. Have you looked at your life and have you said, I've been weighed in the balances and been found wanting. I'm lost and I know that I'm lost. Have you been... Have you, have you realized that you've sinned and there's nothing in this world? There's nothing. There, are, there is no amount of work that you can do that will make up for your sins. That's confrontation. Have you been convicted? I've seen people come to revival services. I've seen people come to this church week after week. 